Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for Sierra and in today's deck spotlight we will be taking a look at our Tosis's Warrior deck. This is the deck that was used by the champion of the BlizzCon 2013 Invitational, one of three, and I plan to look at all three of those this week. Let's start off by talking about his warrior deck, uh, focuses on some very strong enraged creatures and weapon play. Uh, some of the enraged creatures include Amani Berserker and Raging Worgen. There are enraged triggers in Inner Rage and Slam, and then some strong weapons for the early and mid game, such as Fiery War Axe and Arcanite Reaper. Now with the premise out of the way, let's take a look at the deck in action. So one of the really great things about this deck, beyond the fact that it's super aggressive, is that it has some fantastic synergy. Uh, specifically, there's really, in, in many situations, you've got plays for turn 1, 2, 3, 4, and beyond. It's got some, just a great mana curve, if you will. Uh, we don't have our turn 1 play here. Our biggest turn 1 play with this deck is the Leper Gnome, but unfortunately didn't end up getting one of those in our opening hand. I did keep this combo. I, I probably could have gotten rid of either the Taskmaster or the Slam, uh, simply because we only need one of those to trigger this guy and I probably would have it probably would have been beneficial to try to mulligan one of those cards into a weapon or something along those lines but uh, alas we did not end up doing that and for turn two it looks like we are just going to armor up and then pass the turn on over. Uh, so turn three is likely to be the Raging Worgen, and then we'll follow that up with the Taskmaster or the Slam the turn after. At least that's the uh, tentative plan. The other option, though, is I could Warsong Commander first and foremost and see if he tries to waste something on it. Now, for turn three, he's not going to have too many options. He could coin into a Hammer of Wrath, but that would be pretty big. So I guess the question is, do I, would I rather have him Hammer of Wrath of this or this? Mm. Uh, the other option too is if I go with this, I can play him with charge and then bounce into that and then bounce him in the face. But I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to try this actually. So turn three, we're going to go with this. I'd like to see if you waste a coin to Hammer of Wrath this or not. It's possible that he might do that, so let's take a look, see what he ends up doing this turn, or is he just gonna reinforce this is other option? Because frankly, I'd rather have him focus on killing this and save my worgen. I mean, this is fantastic, and it's it's absolutely amazing to have the charge, but um, the worgen's really nice, especially with the wind fury to push through the extra damage. It can be super hilarious if I end up slamming him and you're gonna get that Enrage Wind Fury. It'll just be really, really funny <laughs> if that ends up being how it pans out. All right, so we're gonna see a Knife Juggler here. And he's gonna follow it up with what? We got Divine Shield, or no, you're gonna coin into a two drop, which will be another creature, I'm assuming, or a pump up. No, there it is, a Creature Archer Protector. That's gonna trigger a Knife Throw. Hits that, and then he's gonna follow it up with hitting that. Okay, so now we've got uh, something else to deal with, and that is the fact that he has got a shield. Um, I'm probably actually gonna waste an inner rage. Well, maybe not. Maybe I could just waste use the inner rage for that instead. But I want to get... The thing is, I might actually waste an inner rage to get rid of that shield. In fact, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Because I want this thing to die. I don't want this thing to live. So... I'm actually going to waste an inner rage on that. That's the game plan. Gonna use the inner rage, get rid of that. Then we are going to hit this, give him wind fury, hit him, and then get rid of this. Okay. I, yeah, I think that was a pretty good play. I think that was a pretty good way to do it. So this deck is fairly straightforward. You've got the wind fury, you've got the weapons. It's all about trying to trying to maximize your plays and trying to maximize your trades. I mean, I guess that's the case with all of Hearthstone, to be honest. It's not specific to this deck, but uh, next turn could be the Arcanite Reaper, depending on what he plays. Uh, it's gonna have silencing that, which gets rid of our lovely Wind Fury, which means I'll probably just throw him into his creature. I think that's what I will probably do. And we could also we got the slam, now save that. And we're going to be sitting on five. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go with him. And then we are actually going to pop him down on him. And let's get rid of that. And go with this. Okay. 
So now we've got this in play. Pretty big threat. We'll see if he has a Consecration to drop, which will be his entire turn. Other good thing, too, is that he's been really prioritized. Because this deck is so aggressive, he's been really prioritized on dealing with our minions, and we still haven't even taken any damage at this point. Yeah, changing my attack to one, that's fine, because the primary reason this thing's even in play is for the charge. Reporting for duty. We get a green skin, which we'll probably use to uh, pump up our weapon next turn. For now, though, let me try to think here how I want to do this. Could go with a weapon to take that out and then remove him. And I think that's going to be the play. Going to go with a weapon. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. And then hit him in the face. Uh, the reason I went with that attack with a 2-1 instead of this one is because I didn't want to get his health lower. Here's a great example. He could have hit me with the Sword of Justice this turn and killed the commander, which is not definitely not an ideal situation, not exactly what I would have wanted to happen, so. Okay. So Cra <laughs> Captain Greenskin will be coming into play. This is actually going to be a really big turn. And then we're going to follow that up with the Taskmaster for this guy. Pump him up. We're going to use our weapon attack to get rid of him so he doesn't get any more of those imps in play. We're going to use the 2-1 to eliminate him. And that will be hitting him for a bunch. That's a total of 10 damage to the face, bringing him down to 13. Again, some great, great synergy with these cards. Alright, charge. He'll be getting rid of my 7-1 here. Our 7-3. That will just drop his shield. We've got six, seven, eight, nine damage that can go his way. There's a frothing berserker, so here's even more damage. It's gonna be a lot more damage, actually, because we're gonna slam him. It's gonna pump him up too, plus he pumps up himself because a uh, uh, guy took damage. I'm gonna go with him, and then we are going to go this to do damage to him, pumping him up even further. And then we're gonna trade these two guys, pumping him up two more times. And then we swing for the victory. And that is an example of a game. So let's go ahead and wrap things up by taking a look at the deck list for our Kostis' Warrior deck. As mentioned at the top of the video, this deck really has three main focuses. That's the enraged creatures, things to trigger your enraged creatures, and then weaponry. And weapon play, creatures that not only are spells that not only add to your weapons, the durability and attack, but ones that also play off of it. So let's just run through that list here. Uh, two inner rages, one of the enraged triggers here for our enraged creatures. Upgrade, either giving us a plus one, plus one to a weapon we have in play, or if you're in one of those strange situa situations uh, where your opponent does like a really strong turn one play that you want to get rid of and you have no other weapon in your hand, you could potentially drop this uh, upgrade to get that one three weapon and deal with any threats. Leper Gnome, probably one of the best turn one drops in the game. It's such a strong creature. Uh, just so much value behind it. It's a two one and you can use it to trade another creature and still push two, two damage through from the death rattle to your opponent. The Fiery War Axe for an early game weapon, very effective, lots of three toughness early game creatures that this can quite handedly deal with. Two of the slams here, once again, as an enraged trigger, and the great thing is your two main enraged creatures, the Amani Berserker, as well as the Raging Worgen, they both have three health. So slamming them, uh, triggers their enrage and allows you to draw a card and the creatures of course are still alive. Amani Berserker as our one of our enraged creatures for the early game. The Blood Sail Raider, really really good with your weaponry. You get an early game Fiery War Axe, plus you upgrade it, you drop this down, it gets plus four attack to it. Uh, the Cruel Taskmaster, another one of our enraged triggers. Also sometimes it's not always the case, but sometimes you can even use it to pick off, get that one last damage in against an opposing creature to finish them off. But most of the time, this is used as an enrage trigger. The Frothing Berserker, because there is so much trading that takes place and so much damage, um, not only from trading, but also from triggering your enrage creatures, the Frothing Berserker can get rather huge rather fast. 
Raging Worgen, uh, just a fantastic enraged creature, the plus one attack, plus the Wind Fury, uh, with something like, you know, the Inner Rage, or with something like the, specifically the Cruel Taskmaster, plus a Raging Worgen, is a lot of damage. Uh, Warsong Commander, to give your other minions charge, as you saw last game, can be very, very, very effective, especially if your opponent doesn't deal with it soon. Uh, the Arathi Weaponsmith, just a good creature to have. Gives you a weapon, it's a solid 3-3, not too bad at all. Big ol' weapons here for the mid game in the Arcanite Reapers. Five damage, kind of hilarious. This with an upgrade makes it even that much better. Uh, Captain Greenskin, again, another way to pump up the vast array of weapons that you have. The Argent Commander for a mid late game uh, finisher or trading of creatures. Uh, the Gorhal, very strong late game weapon. And then if you end up pushing towards turn eight, this a lot of times will win the game for you. The Gromush Hellscream with an inner rage kind of hilarious turn a drop for a crap ton of damage all right guys so that is the deck list and a quick display of artosis's warrior deck the one that he used to win at blizzcon's 2013 hearthstone invitational um we're going to take a look at some gameplay tomorrow from this deck in a series of games uh, as i always follow up these spotlight videos with and then later in the week we're going to go ahead and take a look at his other two decks that's going to do it for this video thank you guys so much for watching if you like the content please subscribe and as always keep watching and keep owning